let's not dip our headstock into the coffee. So let's start. I just played the Ionian off camera, and I know the Ionian quite well. It's the major scale. But then I thought, I want to teach the Dorian mode, and I'm going to start on D. So here we go. I'm going to build the Dorian mode. Before I do, you need to know that the Dorian mode is first note D, and then all the way up the alphabet back to D again, no sharps, no flats. So again, D Dorian is all natural notes, no sharps, no flats, from D to D, all right? So if I know that much, I'll say here's D on the 10th fret of the E string. Now, this is where I transition to the technology. I go to the, the spreadsheet. You'll see it on your screen now. And on that spreadsheet, I've got my layout such that all my string names are on the left. Then I have finger positions going from left to right and their corresponding fret numbers. It's actually very easy to read. So we're always going to be looking at tabs and always looking at spreadsheets like this. You might think, oh my God, is this really guitar class? Do I have to do Excel spreadsheets? And the answer softly is, yeah, you kind of do because this is it. This is how you build your knowledge. This is how you build your foundation and how you eventually get into the mastery level of guitar. You could play the same thing over and over for 50 years, but if you, if you do this stuff, it, I guarantee you it is the fastest way to get yourself into the level you want to be with confidence, okay? So here we are on the 10th fret on that E string. That's producing the D note. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my spreadsheet and right there I have the I have it written 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? So I'm going to write Do or D or 1 or X. Since I'm building it, I'm going to put D because when I'm building it, I want to make sure that my notes are right. So if I do it with D, that's my first note. So there's D. Next, I need E which I know is not gonna be here because that's D sharp. So instead, I go to the 12th fret. So now we need, on the 12th fret, we need that E, so we're skipping. There we go, on 12 we have E. So Do, Re, and now we need F. So, right there with our pinky on the 13th fret. So we'll type that in too, go right next door. Oops, typed the wrong thing. There we go, so we got D, E, and F so far. Cool. Next we need a G. We're probably gonna go to the next string down. So again, we're looking for a G. We're on the A string though. Now on the A string, the 12th fret is gonna be A. So if we go down, that's A flat. And down to 10, that gives us G, perfect. So we go 10th fret, A string. Type that in here. And that note was G. You're starting to see the logic, I think. So D, E, F, G. We need an A. So we're going to skip over G sharp and hit A. So A is on the 12th fret. So D, E, F, G, A. The next note we need is B, which is two frets up. So you have a choice. And this is where I talk about the super pinky. The super pinky is where instead of playing the pinky on the next fret up, you play the pinky two frets up. So you stretch out your pinky and move it to the side. You see that? So instead of here, I play here. And hopefully my hand doesn't move too much when I do it. Okay, so that would be from A to B. If you tried doing that on the D string, what you're gonna find is you would have to drop down with your index. So your index normally starts on 10, but you would have to go here, which would throw off your entire shape, in my opinion. So I use the super pinky because it maintains this as the cutoff point. My anchor never changes. It always stays here on the 10th fret. That tells me I'm in D Dorian. So I don't want to change that, but I will change my pinky. That's fine with me. So from the top again, we got D, E, F, G, A, then we have B with the super pinky, so we're stretching out, 
to the 14th fret with the pinky. So I'm gonna type that in real quick. There's my B note. With the super pinky, so we're pretty much done with that. We're not gonna mess with the A string anymore. Next we need a C. So that's gonna be on the G string somewhere. So it's gotta be there, right? And as I'm building this, I'm thinking about it. If this is B, and that sounds the same, then it's gotta be B as well. And I know that B has no sharp, so this right here has to be C on 10. Cool, so I type that in. C is gonna be on that 10th fret. Then we need D to close this out for the first octave, which is right there on 12. And that should make sense because that is the D string. All right, so there we are with our ring finger on the 12th fret playing D. And then we need E again. We're gonna start over the process. E is gonna be two frets up. So let's do a super pinky here again on 14. So super pinky D string to 14th fret. And that gives us E. The next note we need is on the G string and it's gonna be F. So remember that if the 12th fret is G, me, then one step down is gonna be G flat and one more step is gonna be F. So that's the one we need. Again, perfect, it's on the 10th fret. That's what we wanna see. We wanna stay on that 10th fret. So from the D on the 12th fret, we super pinky to E and then we go to the 10th fret on the G string to play F. Nice. So now we type that in, F. Then we need G, which is gonna use that ring finger. So we type that in, G on the 12th fret. Then we need A, and here we have a choice. You can do a super pinky again if you really like it, but on the B string right here on the 10th fret is another A. So I'm gonna opt to use my index. As much as possible, I use my index instead of my pinky. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory why, right? So we skip down to the B string on the 10th fret to play A. Now we need a B, so we're gonna skip over A sharp and play B on the 12th fret. Type that in. Next we need C, which is right next door on the next fret. So that's 13, type that in. So close, we just need another D and we're done with the whole thing. So we were here. That last D, just like the first E, is 10th fret. Okay, so type that in, D. And that's it, that's Dorian. So now if you look at the graphic, you're gonna see you've built it yourself. Even if you followed along with me, you built it yourself. Hopefully you were able to write it down on a paper or just type it into a spreadsheet. It's so easy, it's so, so easy. You just go to Google, go to Google Drive, pull up a Sheets, a new Sheets file, and just type it in, so easy. And when you look at it, it's just so much easier to, to see, to visualize, okay? So now when I play it back, I can actually play it and say the notes, and again, that's gonna give me that wisdom that I need for later on. So, D, E, F, G, A, super pinky, B, C, D, super pinky to E, F, G, A, B, C, D. You can take it from its position here and you can move it somewhere else. As long as you keep the pattern the same. That's just the logic of the guitar. If you learn this shape, this, uh, this pattern, the way these fingers move for D Dorian, you can then erase D Dorian from your mind and just remember how it feels to play it, and then you can play it anywhere. So let me illustrate that. I'll do it on C after this. So let's do D Dorian again. And now I'm gonna do it on C. That's the mastery of guitar. When you can do that, everywhere, at will. If someone shouts a note across the stage at you or into the microphone, like, hey, let's play E now, or hey, let's play F now. 
And we're going to play Dorian, right? Because the song is just focusing on this Dorian riff. You, as the master guitar player, are not daunted by that. You're not going, oh crap, I don't remember. Let me go on YouTube and look at that video. I'm sure Max talked about it somewhere. No. You're going you're gonna to know the shape. You're going to feel the shape. That Dorian shape has two super pinkies, right? That's how you identify it for the most part. And that's Dorian. I just know that to be Dorian. I have that feeling in my hand and that sound, that certain energy. That's Dorian. Okay? And that's how I build every single mode. So... Let's transition away from the guitar now. Now, we've, now that we've built it, let's look at the graphic. And what we're going to see is we're going to restructure the graphic. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to take all the things that we have going on here, uh, and we're going we're gonna to call them different names. That's it. We're just going to call them different names. It's going to be super easy. Okay? Just in case you want to double check with facial reactions. There you go. Okay? So let's take... The same thing that's happening here, let's copy this and let's paste it. Oops, wrong spot. Let's copy this and paste it, okay? So we've created uh, a framework and we're going to change the names. That's all we're gonna do. So in this case, let's just put X's or dashes. X's mean you hit the note, dash means you don't, okay? So everywhere there's a letter, I'm just putting an X. That's it. It's like the easiest thing you'll do in my class. Or, or any class. It's like whack-a-mole. Just playing a boring game of whack-a-mole by yourself. But the power of this is that you've got notes that don't have to have any meaning. They don't have to mean anything. You just have to play them and then they take on a meaning of their own, okay? So then I'm gonna make these bold. Make sure that these are all bold. All right, so now you know which ones to play and which ones not to play. You've got your layout up above that tells you your fingers to use, tells you whether you need a super pinky or not, tells you uh, which fret position. So now I'm gonna take this whole thing, I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it down here and I'm gonna do it again, but I'm gonna do it with numbers, okay? And I do this because when I was taking music theory in university and ear training, my teacher had to use lots of different terms. And some people, for whatever reason, they liked numbers more than letters. So if you said to them, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, they had no idea what the heck you were talking about. I and mean, maybe that's like a language barrier thing. Um, some people were you know, raised with Cyrillic, for example, or Egyptian hieroglyphics and got to cater to everybody. So instead, we use numbers. And not everybody uses the Arabic number system either. So... Uh, we had to figure out some way to communicate to all people. Okay, so X's are pretty clear. It's like you hit this or you don't hit this. It's on or it's off. It's binary. Most people understand binary because most things in this universe are binary. Anyway, so that's a great way to start. Then if you want to get more theoretical and you want to actually know the values, you put in the note names like we did when we built it. So D, E, F, G, so on. Then we're gonna do a thing called numbers, and the numbers will help certain people. I found that a lot of my uh, colleagues and cohorts, they, they found numbers to be useful because it gave them a sense of progression. It told them how far along they were, okay? And I can agree with that. So D is one, E is two, and so on and so forth. You just replace the letter with the number. And make sure that it's going upward in step, okay? So G is four, A is five, B is six, C is seven, and then you guessed it, D is back to one. Don't make that mistake, so don't, don't keep going up to eight. Make it one again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay, cool. So now we've got three different systems by which we can study this. Let's take the whole thing, and for one last stroke of fun, we will call it solfeggio. And this is very helpful for when you're singing. One is Do. Two is Re. Three is Me. Now it's called Me in this case because it's minor. It's a flat three. 
but we can deal with that later. Four is fa. Five is soul, like the sun. Six, in this case, is la. La is the natural six, or the major six. And then seven is going to be te. Te is the flat seven. It's the minor seven sound. And then we go back to do. Okay, so then we repeat every letter that we just did, every solfeggio uh, word, we're just gonna type them back in. So uh, D is do, E is re, F, uh, yeah, F is me, G is fa, A is sol, uh, B is la, C is te, and D is do. So if you were to sing it while playing it, you would get something like, Do, Re, Me, Fa, So, La, Te, Do. And you would continue like that. It might be tricky to hit some of the notes because you might not be able to visualize it the way I do. You might not have the training from your training to quickly kind of figure out where the note should be. But if you just repeat it over and over again, you're going to get closer. But you can play along, you can sing along, and when you use the solfeggio words, you're creating placeholders, you're creating meaningful words that allow you to grab on, like grapple on and say, I know what that note sounds like. I know relatively what that's going to sound like in my head before I even sing it. That's what we want. So keep it simple and just play along and sing along and try to use these new words because then you're gonna have that vocabulary to use later on, okay? So that's it, that's how you, that's how you take any mode, any of them, because there are seven, and you build it from scratch. You don't have the names in your head of what they're called, you can look them up, of course, and so that's why for mastery guitar and for maybe some other lectures or some other videos, you're gonna find the rest of the modes and we're gonna talk about them doing almost the same thing, just less boring, more fast, right? So this was a way for you to build it yourself. I wanna give you the tools to teach yourself. If you just go on Google, look them up, you can build your own spreadsheets. You can do away with watching some other guy's video. But if you want to follow the structure, the next segments are going to go mode by mode, break them down, give them new names, just like we did, and then we'll go a little bit more. We'll go a little farther with it. So we'll figure out how to play them together. We'll figure out how to mix them together. And at that time, you're really going to be tasting mastery guitar. Because when you can play techniques, modes, rhythms, the blues, when you can do all of that together at the same time with chords, there's arguably not much more. I mean... Aside from like going out there and trying to find an ancient guitar and dust it off and play in the style of Paco de Lucia, there's really not much more. That's guitar. Now that we've seen how to build the Dorian mode and the thought process and how to call each note something different, basically, let's just do the Ionian mode. So I'll pull up my spreadsheet and we can just use it as a reference so we can use the image or look at it live. Really what we want to do is completely master the Ionian mode. So grab your guitar and let's do it. So for C Ionian, let's go to the eighth fret. The way this framework is designed allows your hand to stay in the same place. That's what we want. So we're getting used to the shape and we're going to put our middle finger on the eighth fret. That note is C, okay? We're gonna start with the middle finger and that's gonna be an indication that we're playing C Ionian. Here's how the shape goes. I'll just go strike by strike. I'll tell you the finger, I'll tell you the fingers and then we'll do it with three other names, okay? Middle finger eight, excuse me. Pinky 10. On the next string down, index seven. Middle finger 8, 
pinky 10, next string down, index 7, ring finger 9, pinky 10. That's one octave in C Ionian. You might recognize this by now. It's the major scale. It's about as vanilla as it gets. Sorry if you really like vanilla. So there's the octave, the full octave, from C to C. Notice that these two right here, from the E string to the D string, separated by two frets, is an octave. So you can double a lot of notes that way. You can play with that on your own time. Or no, I don't care, it's a video. So, we're playing C Ionian, we're up to the octave now, and we're gonna start over. So, striking here with the pinky on 10, index on the next string down on seven, ring finger on nine, then we're gonna go pinky on 10. On the B string, we're gonna use our middle finger on eight, pinky on 10, index on seven next string down, and middle finger on eight. And that's the whole thing. Let's try it again. This time, I'm gonna call out the note names. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Now, I'm gonna call them by number. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And last time, I'm gonna do solfeggio. So this is very good for singing, and because of that, we might as well sing along or hum along, okay? So, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Don't worry about sounding amazing right now. All you really need is to learn the solfeggio words and start to associate them with the scale you're playing. So, do, re, mi, do, re, mi, fa, sol. You really want to just get the feeling and understand how the words work with that feeling. Do, re, mi, fa, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Okay, so now you've got X's to tell you where to play. You've got note names to tell you where to play. You've got numbers and you've got solfeggio. Lots of ways to play the same thing or lots of ways of referring to the same thing. You might be like, man, that's convoluted. Why do I need four ways to describe one thing? Well, I mean, technically you don't, but look, just as I said with the Dorian part of the video, when you are communicating across many different language boundaries, some people don't know the number system very well. Some people don't know the um, solfeggio, certainly. Some people don't know the notes. They don't understand the keyboard yet. Some people don't know what X's are. So it's just covering a lot of bases. The most obvious one is the X's, right? If there's an X, you play. If there's a dash, you don't play. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's C Ionian. Now there are five more modes, not including that Dorian, right? So we, we've covered C Ionian and D Dorian, and D Dorian we built. The rest we can figure out on our own, or we can look at another video for, but it follows the exact same logic as C Ionian and D Dorian. You take the note and you play every alphabet letter, no sharps, no flats. And if you have to reason your way through, figuring it out, okay, it must be this one or it must be this one, that's awesome. The more you do that, the closer you're gonna get to your guitar, the more comfortable you're gonna be. And I know I keep hashing over that in my videos, but it's very important that you don't fear the instrument. Make the instrument fear you. And the only way to do that is to get the knowledge. 
Okay? So now you have Cion and D Dorian. Go try to learn E Phrygian. Go on Google and search guitar modes. Use my graphic, use my spreadsheets, use my structure to give yourself an outline and to quickly get into your head and most importantly into your hands the correct modes. Then you'll be able to play jazz, you'll be able to play blues, you'll be able to improvise, and that's what we really are going for here. Okay, so I think I will very quickly go through Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian for you in the next segment, and that will be the end of this lecture. Okay, this segment is how to go through your spreadsheet and move things. So uh, just looking at the screen, you'll see that I reasoned out my Phrygian, and this is a carbon copy from my Dorian, so actually I need to rename this. And I'm gonna use the exact same framework. Okay. And how to create the carbon copy, how to change. So I went through and I reasoned them out note by note. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. Now that I have this, I need to replace my framework from Dorian. So I'm just gonna copy and paste with the X's. And I can do this for every box that I have below. And then everywhere there is an X, I'm gonna use whatever the framework is. So if here the framework is X's, and here the framework is um, note names, and here the framework is numbers, and here the framework is solfeggio, then, then I can do that. So I go down to the notes, and we're starting on E, and we're going up to shining E for the full double octave. So E, F, skip over F sharp to get G, A, B, C, just following the alphabet. It's actually not that tricky. The trickiest part is figuring out where the notes are. There we go. So that's notes done. Then for numbers, we just replace the X's with the ascending numerical order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back to one again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one. All right, and last one is solfeggio. So the first one is do. Now, with every mode, there's going to be different solfeggio because the notes are changing. It's not always going to be do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. That's C major. That's C Ionian. But if we want to do Dorian, right? Dorian was do, re, me, fa, sol, la, te, do. Each solfeggio word tells you about the note itself. Do is the root note. If I said D, D-I, that would be a sharp one. That would be a half step above the normal one. But for this, we're staying with do, we're staying with the root, E. The next note up, the next fret up, is not re, it's ra. So do, ra. Then we have the note here, which is me. Do, ra, me. Fa, sol. Here's le because it's flat, you're starting to notice a trend. With the me and the le, it's a flat. Ra, on the other hand, we call it ra because re is already re, right? So we just take it down to ra. Okay, so from le, we get te and do. Then we start over, ra, me, fa, sol, le, Te, do. One of my favorite modes. Sounds so cool. Okay. So I'll just play it. You don't have to see me playing it. You can just listen. And this is what it would sound like. So. Do, ra, me, fa, sol, le, te, do. Ra, me, fa, sol, le, te, do. Okay. So that's how you change the chart and how you change your graphics and your spreadsheet uh, so that you have a nice reference to go back and look at the modes. Creating your own is really powerful because, well, it's yours. 
and you know how to read it. Okay, now we're gonna go into the remaining modes. We're gonna quickly go through them and just play them, sing them, uh, call them by their different names and call it a day. And then you're gonna be on your way to mastery of guitar. So this might be the most fun you're gonna have on guitar. This might be your favorite lecture segment teaching thing, I don't know. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna play all the modes, all seven of the modes. I already did the Ionian thing for you, the Dorian thing for you, and a little bit of the Phrygian showing you how to create your own outline. Now let's do them, okay? So I'm gonna go through them very quickly and I'm gonna have on the screen a graphic that will show you, and you can also just find this later, I can share it with you. And that graphic will show you where to play. I'm gonna play each mode with finger positions, then with the note names, then with the numbers, and then with the solfeggio. And I'm gonna to try to hum them or sing them along, okay? First one, Ionian. We're gonna play C Ionian, also known as the major scale. Here we go. Middle finger eight, pinky 10, next string index seven. Middle eight, pinky 10, next string index seven. Uh, ring finger nine, pinky 10. Next string index seven, ring finger nine, pinky 10. Next string, middle finger eight, pinky 10. Next string, seven, middle finger eight. Got it? Now let's do note names. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now let's do numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Oops, five, six, seven, one. Let's try that one again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And lastly, solfeggio. Do, re, do, do. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. C Ionian, done. Next one. D Dorian. This one's gonna use the super pinky, so pay attention. Alrighty, this time we're starting on the 10th fret with our index finger, and we're gonna use the locked index position, so the index is never gonna change from the 10th fret. Here we go. So 10, 12, 13, next string. 10, 12, super pinky to 14. Next finger, 10, 12, super pinky to 14. Next, 10, 12, next string, 10, 12, 13, 10. Okay, note names. 10th fret, don't forget. D, E, F, G, A, super pinky to B. C, D, super pinky to E. F, G, A, B, C, D. Numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And lastly, solfeggio. So, do re me fa sol la te do re me fa sol la te do. And that's D Dorian. Moving on to Phrygian. For this, we're gonna to go to the base of the guitar. So we're gonna to go to the very bottom of the fretboard all the way down here. Here we go, we're gonna play zero, one, three, zero, two, three, zero, two, three, zero, two, zero, one, three, zero. Now let's do it with note names, a little bit easier. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Now with numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. There we go. And lastly, solfeggio. 
Do ra me fa sol re te do ra me fa sol re te do. Moving on to Lydian now. Lydian also uses the super pinky. Here we go. We're going to start with the first fret position. So let's just do uh, fret numbers. Here we go. One, three, five. Two, three, five. Two, three, five. Two, four. One, three, five and one. So again, one, three, five, two, three, five, two, three, five, two, four, one, two, five, one. Excuse me, one, three, five, one. Now this is the trickiest one of them all because we want to keep a locked first fret position and we didn't want to use any of the open notes. We could have done Lydian with open uh, open notes to make it a little bit easier, but I prefer teaching it this way because you can use it anywhere on the fretboard as long as you're using the super pinky, okay? And it doesn't involve moving down with your index. We want a locked index finger position so that we know where we are, okay? Next one is by note, so F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Now numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And lastly, solfeggio. Do, re, mi, fi, sol, la, ti, do, re, mi, fi, excuse me, fi, sol, la, ti, do. Very peculiar sounding scale, for sure. Mixolydian also uses the super pinky. We're gonna start on the third fret position for G. So here we go, let's try, just so you know where we're starting. Let's try here, just with finger positions. So, three, five, seven, three, five, seven, three, five, seven, four, five, three, five, six, three. Now by note, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's kind of a game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And lastly with solfeggio. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, te, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, te, do. And that's Mixolydian. Now for Aeolian, and everyone's favorite, especially for the blues. Let's go by finger position. Starting on the fifth fret on A, so this is A Aeolian. Five, seven, eight. Five, seven, eight, five, seven, nine, five, seven, five, six, eight, five. A little bit easier than the rest. Only one super pinky note to play. Now by note. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And now by number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Solfeggio. Do, re, me, fa, sol, re, te, do, re, me, fa, sol, re, te, do. Right on. Last one, Locrian, my personal favorite, and the most fun to play as a pattern, in my opinion. Let's start on the seventh fret position. This is B, Locrian. Seven, eight, ten. Seven, eight, 
10, 7, 9, 10, 7, 9, 10, 8, 10, 7. Now by note, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. By number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. And solfeggio. Do, do, ra, me, fa, se, le, te, do, ra, me, fa, se, le, le, te, do. I'm going to try that one more time with an octave shift. Do, ra, me, fa, se, le, te, do. Do, ra, me, fa, se, le, te, do. And that's it. That's all seven modes from Locrian, sorry, from Ionian to Locrian. And what you'll notice if you go back is that you're playing C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Those are your starting notes every time. With Ionian, you started on C. With Dorian, you started on D. Excuse me. With Phrygian, you started on E. With Lydian, you started on F. With Mixolydian, you started on G. With Aeolian, you started on A, and with Locrian, you started on B. Now look at what's happening on that E string as I show you. You started here on 8, you went up to 10, then you dropped down to 0, then 1, then 3, and then 5, and 7 to close it out. So it's a cycle. You're going around the fretboard, starting here, here, then starting over. Okay, so now you have the ability to play each one in sequence, and you should. You have the tools, you have the information, you have lots of different ways to follow. In case one doesn't work, you have four other, sorry, three other fail-safes. And this is going to take some practice in the left hand, of course, to get the fingers spread out. But once you're done with this, you can take any of these modes, and you can play them anywhere you want on the guitar, save for perhaps the Phrygian mode. I think the Phrygian mode because it uses the open position, since it's down here, when I'm teaching it on E, it's tricky to translate elsewhere, right? Because you're relying on the fact that it's open. And anytime you play something with the open position, that's the case. It's, it's tricky, because this is permanently on the guitar. Your finger would have to bar it if you wanted to do it the same way. So actually, we should work on building the Phrygian mode in a movable position instead of at the open position. So if I were to do that, and this will be the last thought of the day, it's quite a big day, but it's good, is I would take the same layout here, so I would take this exact same note layout, and I would copy it, and I would paste it over here on the side. Oops. And then what I want to do is rebuild it, okay? So this used the open position, so I was playing the, the open notes but I want to play them on different notes. So let's just do it on the, let's do it on the A note, okay? And I actually don't need my guitar for this. I can just do it on the spreadsheet because you'll see my logic, okay? So I don't want to change where anything is positioned. Again, I don't want to change anything about the positioning of these letters. All I'm gonna do is change what the letter is. So the first one from E, I'm gonna make into A. Now from the F, we know that it's one fret above A. So it's gonna be some kind of B because we're going on the alphabet starting on the fifth fret position. Just as a reminder, let's go ahead and put it in. Five, six, seven, eight, okay? So A is on five. The next note up is some kind of B note because that's the two. Now in this case, it's gonna be what we call B flat. This is your first foray into flat notes, maybe. So B flat, is just a B note down by one half step, down by one fret, okay? So A to B flat, and then there was nothing here, and then we had G, but that's not what we have. What's the third alphabet letter after A? A, B, C, so it's gonna be a C note. Next note is gonna be some kind of D, all right? In this case, it's just D. 
Next, there was no note. And then we had what? We had E. And then we had the note above E, which would be F. Then we had uh, a G note. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, should be an A here, and B, flat. Okay, so that's Do, Ra, Me, if we're looking at this one down here, Do, Ra, Me, Fa, Sol. Yeah, we wanted that, we wanted to keep the Sol. So A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat. And then we have C again. Then we have a D, <clears throat> and we have an E. So you're noticing that the only thing that was different was that B flat, right? It's the only note that's flat in this whole thing. There's A again. A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A. Got it? So when you turned the Phrygian onto the fifth fret position, when you made it A Phrygian, you just needed to add the B flat. That's it. It's the only thing that changed. Okay? So... This is a translatable form of it. If we take our guitar now, and we try it out. So now we're on the fifth fret, trying Phrygian on five. The shape, the pattern, everything stays the same, so. Yep, that's Phrygian. Cool. So, not that hard to transpose, not that hard uh, to go from the open shape somewhere else. All I needed to do was copy paste and work through it. And so now I can go back through the graphic and I can change everything the same exact way I just did. So I can, I can copy these over. Um, in fact, if I just do this, right, if I just change the numbers and put them up here, do I am, oops. I M R P. These are all going to be exactly the same. So we're pretending like the index is that that nut on the guitar, the bar thing that's holding the strings. So just copy paste, and that's going to be the same. You can double check right below. It's going to be the same. So here the numbers have to change, just like with the letters. This becomes five. Oh, excuse me. Oh no, the numbers stay the same. Excuse me, numbers stay the same. Um, the solfege stays the same. So really the only thing that changed was the notes, okay? So this guy right here, these notes, were the only things that needed to be modified. Everything else could have been copy-pasted. It works. Uh, instead of playing the open position of the string, you play with the index. Okay, not that big of a change. And I like the fact that you can move this shape around, so you can play that Phrygian anywhere you want. Okay, enough talk. You have all the modes, you have ways of manipulating them, you have ways of moving them around the fretboard. So this is the exciting part. This is where guitar really starts getting fun because you have, um, you have lots of things under your belt at this point, but now that you're focusing on the modes, you're gonna start to create solos and you're gonna start kind of blending solos together. You're gonna play certain modes at certain times and different modes at different times in the same song, maybe even on the same chord. So. That's it for me for now. Good luck. It was a big class. It's a big jump forward, and I hope you're ready. Cheers.